Ladies and gentlemen, all the wonderful people at PAX, hope you are in high spirits, because it is time for our next match. Let's bring out the competitors. Our first from the UK. They won the Mythic Championship at Cleveland. Join me in welcoming Autumn Burchett. Auden will be running Esper Acuity and Team Reclamation and is, of course, responsible for everyone on MTG Arena thinking that they too can win with Mono Blue. Their opponent from the United States. You may know her by her streaming alias, MTG Nerd Girl. It's Brittany Hamilton. <laughs> Brittany Hamilton, too, has some unusual lists up her sleeve. A typical mono red, but also green, blue, aggro. Let's head over to the casters for the match. Thank you, Dean. I appreciate that. And welcome back to the booth here at PAX East. We're here for the Mythic Invitational, and we are just about ready, David, to get underway uh, with our match. Once the players are ready, they will be battling and now take a look at MTG Nerd Girl there. She just takes a quick look at that list one last time. Now, for those of you not in the room, uh, the players do get a chance actually to take a look at the opposing deck list uh, about, what is it, an hour ahead of it? They, they get a little bit of time beforehand to take a look at the list and study it to try to see any, look, a lot of these lists are well known to the players, right, David? I mean, they're, they're gonna have an idea what's going on in the format, but any little twists, any little things that they may need to play around. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting too, though, because you have to wonder which deck Will you see, right? Yeah, and that's, know, and that's a really you important don't know a question. Or B. Right, and the thing is, the, the players who's playing it doesn't either. <laughs> so this is kind of an interesting twist in duo standard, which is that the players don't pick which deck they're going to play first. It's going to be handed to them at random, and as well, of course, as the play draw. As we work our way into game two, they'll be playing the other deck. Whichever one they didn't play in game one, they're going to be playing in game two, and whoever was on the play in game one is going to be on the play in game two. If there is a third and deciding game in our match, the players will get to choose which of their two decks to play, but the die roll will once again be random. So, looks like we're just getting set up here. And may have, excuse me if, I, if it's been said, so, for example, Autumn is given deck A. Will they know which deck Nerd Girl is also given to start? I think that they find out now. Based like, <laughs> like when we do, basically, like when the cards get played. When the cards get played. Yeah. So looking at your opening hand, you're trying to decide whether you keep it based on, you know, both decks. You don't exactly. Know. Okay. Uh, some type of aggregate, right? And, and that's an interesting skill that we haven't really had to have before in Magic, right? Normally, you either don't know at all what your opponent's playing. Or you know fully. You have an educated guess, or you, you know literally every card in their deck. <laughs> Those are your three options. And it, it's never, well, they might have one of these two decks. And, and that's a skill set that we may need to see here as well. So basically here, Autumn is hoping that if they do get the team or Reclamation deck, that Brittany ends up on the green-blue disruptive aggro deck. Right. Which we haven't discussed yet. We haven't looked at that. Right. List so, yet. so can you let, let's just put our put ourselves in the seat of one of the players. So we'll start with Autumn here. What's the dream scenario? What, what's the I, I get this deck versus is it Esper Acuity, and MTG Nurgle ends up with Mono Red Aggro. And you're on the play. And you're that on is, the play. That's the dream scenario. That's the perfect. So then based that's, on what we have here. Right. So, so if that happens, that puts Autumn in a commanding position in game one. That would mean that game two, it would be MTG Nurgle, with her innovative green really heavy green-based yeah. blue disruptive well, aggro deck against Teamer Reclamation. Now, how does that sit draw. with you? Yeah, maybe I'm going to rethink that, because okay. being on the okay. draw against this green-blue green, green blue ag disruptive aggro deck here, as we see here, something like a Steel Leaf Champion on turn two after a Lana War Elf being on the draw is really hard to deal with. So now that I think about it, I'm not sure which one... It's kind of interesting, yeah, right? Uh, yeah. And by the way, taking a look at this list, this is a spicy one here from Brittany. I mean, this is basically the mono green deck that we've seen in the past, right? Steel Leaf Champion off of Atlanta War Elves is kind of the name of the game with that. But she's added this innovation of putting blue in there for some counter magic so that she can actually defeat Akaya's Wrath or something along those lines. All right, looks like we're underway here, David. Let's get into uh, our match. You see Autumn on the top part of your screen, and there's MTG Nerd Girl down on the bottom. So this opening hand's not bad. I mean, it's got some lands, one drop, some burn spells. It's about what you see with, this, with the mono red deck. And what are you seeing here from the opening hand? Which, by the way, now we know it is the Wilderness Reclamation deck here from Autumn. Well, Autumn has three lands, 
and it has a mix of lands and spells. Unfortunately, Wilderness Reclamation and two expansion explosions, not where you want to be against Mono Red Aggro. I mean, those expansion explosions are pretty expensive and don't do anything in the early game. Yeah. Neither does Wilderness Reclamation. Autumn's That's a stinker of a hand. Autumn's in trouble. I mean, Syncopate can stop, you know, maybe a two drop on turn two, but if, if Ner Nerd Girl's holding up some burn spells, they're not going to play those in their main phase anyway, so. Do you think that Autumn might mulligan that, though? It's tough when you have a, when you have lands and spells like that. I yeah, mean, you, you go really to six big. and then you end up with a one lander, and, and then what do you do next? You know, I mean, it's one of those situations, and maybe Autumn's up against model or the green blue aggro, right? Hand's not as bad. I mean, you're on the draw, it's still pretty bad. I'm not sure what to do with that hand. By the way, uh, you may have noticed some really cool looking cards here on your screen as well. These are card styles, and they are now available on selected cards. Uh, if you Get the card style for the card. It applies to all of them in all your copies. collection. Yeah. So all of the ones that you have in your collection will have that automatically on it. And, of course, there will be more of these to come in the future. We may even have some, some codes uh, a little later today so that you can get your hands on some of these as well. And I'm speaking to you directly, David, by the way, because I know you love these things. Oh, Autumn was on the play. Okay. So that, that makes it not as bad. Not as bad. Okay, so Autumn on the play. That puts MTG Nerd Girl... On the draw, she's going to kick things off with Fanatical Firebrand, chipping in for the typical one damage here that you see early. Shivan Fire is a big help. Syncop being on the play actually makes Syncopate so much better here. This draw is a lot better being on the play. Now Autumn can Syncopate the Pyromancer that comes out. I'm, yeah, I'm curious to see if MTG Nerd Girl plays around it and just maybe goes for a light up the stage here. Nope, it's going to get on the board. And that is going to get snapped off. I mean, there's only two copies of Syncopate, so it's not like you should play around it too much. Without Syncopate, there's no reason not to play your Vishino Pyromancer here. Yeah, she shows no sign of emotion at getting Syncopated here on turn two. Shiv and Fire to take down the tapped Firebrand there. And that keeps Autumn's life total at a cushy 18. Yeah, unfortunately for Nurgle, she doesn't have any constant sources of pressure creatures. Yeah, so, so just burn. Yeah, she's going to go upstairs and then fire off a light up the stage here. Just try to get something going, David. Yeah, but this is the kind of start if you're Autumn that you want your opponent to have because now Autumn can, uh, with a land here, oh, no land, I would say, could deploy Wilderness Reclamation to be off to the ro off and running at 15 life. But Autumn did end up finding a land off of a Growth Spiral, but of course not going to be able to slam that Reclamation right now. Nerd Girl needs to play this mountain. Yeah, the mountain and then the Firebrand get in for one and then light up the stage again. Not bad. Yeah, light up the stage is a really powerful card. Yeah. I was super excited when I saw that card. Wow. Here comes Steamkin. Yeah, and you know what Steamkin can do. This thing can get completely out of hand if left unchecked. This is kind of a hold your breath moment for MTG Nerd Girl because if she gets to untap with that runaway Steamkin, things can get out of hand and it does look like she'll be able to. Yeah, well, I think Autumn here is going to float a mana and then cast ex Expansion Explosion on the Steamkin after untapping the lands. Okay. You've got to get that Steamkin out of here. And it's, it's a good spot here because if Nerd Girl was untapped, she could kill the Steamkin in response maybe. Or, or actually, no, you're still going to you're still gonna draw the card. Sorry, never yeah, mind. Yeah, but still, that, that was an important uh, stop measure there, right? That was... Autumn yeah, you saying, definitely need to keep the Steamkin off the board and don't allow it to get out of control. Exactly. So there's Fanatical Firebrand number two hitting the battlefield. The issue, you know, Pyromancer as well in hand now for Nurgle. She's going to run that out here. Yeah. And Autumn's down to 10. Autumn's halfway down to 10 there. with six points of burn, mm -hmm. two Firebrands. All, that's eight. So theoretically, I mean, Nurgle's not in that bad of a spot. And she's astutely going to take advantage and say, look, while you're tapped out, because that, look, Autumn does not have to tap out very much for the rest of the game. And yep. your girl just knows, I need to just, these need to resolve. That, but, that's but they, my job. But they do have deck lists, and there's only two syncopates in the, in the deck, and one has been cast. So there's only one syncopate left. Is, are there any other counter spells or the, ways to interact at all? No counter spells. And, you're, and you okay. know that Autumn's going to tap out for an expansion explosion at some point, so you can sneak that burn in. Okay. So you don't have to do that lightning bolt there, but it is, you just get it out of the way. Here comes a giant expansion explosion, I imagine. Load six mana for 12 mana total. It's going to be for eight. Unfortunately, I, I imagine it's going to have to go to Vishino you know, Pyromancer here. You want to go upstairs to your opponent to try to end the game. Yeah. But these sources, these creatures here are four points of damage already, and all it would take is one burn spell. So that's six damage, Vishino you know, Pyromancer commanding a lot of respect 
And there's Fiery Cannonade as well in hand. Autumn decided to leave the Steam Vents open uh, in case they drew a Shibin Fire mm -hmm. to kill one of the Fanatical Firebrands. All right. Uh, and that's going to be the game. That's it. U2 Lava Runner is going to have haste and a two power as well. That's four damage plus three. I can do the math on that, David. That's going to be game number one going to MTG Nerd Girl just getting across the finish line after that key resolved expansion explosion from Autumn. Yeah, this matchup's not very good for the team of Reclamation deck, which is why you, I don't think you see a lot of it because Mono Red Aggro is a very popular deck in the duo standard. Um, it turned out it wasn't one of the most, the top two popular decks. Those are... I don't know if I can say that yet. I don't know list. either. Maybe but, we shouldn't. But either way, it's, it's why people didn't bring a lot of team of Reclamation. It's a very powerful deck, but it's a little weak against Moderate Aggro. Autumn had one of the best starts you could imagine. Well, I wouldn't say best, but the Reclamation into Explosion Expansion. Had mana, was at 15 life, and still just was burned out very burned easily. Burned out. Yep. Burned out right across the finish line. It did take every card from Brittany, but uh, she got the job done here in game number one. So things off to a very good start for MTG Nerd Girl as uh, she... Got by Jamie Topples 2-1 to one in the first round, and now is up a game over the Mythic Championship winner from Cleveland. Autumn and no Pichette. waiting. Right into the next games. No waiting. We've moved on here to the green-blue deck. This is a deck we've talked about. I, I do like that part, David. I, I'm not going to lie. The immediate, let's get into the next game. I'm ready. I mean, I, I'm good to go. So Brittany's hand. Pretty solid. I mean, Alana War Elf is the dream start when you're playing any of these green decks with Alana War Elf in it. And, and we don't see one here. So this is going to be an interesting matchup as well. Brittany has brought, like I said, kind of an innovative mid-range-ish green deck that plays a little bit of blue for some counter spells. Autumn's hand's pretty dicey. Um, they have no black mana with two cards with double black wow. in the casting Wow. Class. Moan of Craving and Nezahal, which doesn't Whoa. do much. We just added a third double black card here, David. This could get out of hand quickly. Yeah, once that Absorb is cast, Autumn doesn't have anything else they can play. And um, Steel Leaf Champion, Jade Light Ranger, these cards, they win games fast. They're hey, big. And look at that. There's Galta Primal Hunger in hand now for MTG Nerd Girl. We could see that next turn. 5, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Oh, just uh, in time, Autumn drew a black source of mana. Autumn is going to need to fire that off very proactively here. Watery Grave is going to hit for two, but we could see Galta go on the stack. It's a little risky if you're if you're Brittany or MTG Nerd Girl because if you put Galta in play here and Autumn yeah, casts Kaya's Wrath. Wrath against you, you've just got three for one and lost yeah. you know lots of your sources of damage. But at the same time, you got to wonder that Water Gave just came into play untapped. Now you know that Autumn that wants to cast something with black in it, but yeah. they like likely don't have another black source in hand, so maybe you want to go for it. Yeah, it's interesting. That that Watery Grave draw for Autumn was absolutely key, opening up potentially the rest of their hand. Let's see what happens here. There is an opportunity here to just pass the turn back with lethal, say you have to do Autumn's something. Autumn's at seven, you have lethal. Yeah, but also slamming a Jade Light Ranger always feels nice. You're kind of reloading, you know, get some lands off the top of the library, set up your future draws. Also, if Autumn destroys one of your creatures, you would still have lethal potentially. The issue here is Galta is dependent on you having other creatures in play, which is right. why I think Brittany, Brittany's the, the playing The window now. closes quickly. If you don't play the Galta now and your creatures get moved off the board, then you're not going to be able to play the Galta at all. And by the time you're able to get back up to it, it, it might be too late. So I like that Nerd Girl went ahead and cast the, uh, the Galta here. Yeah, it looks very all in, but there's good rhyme and reason behind it. But Absorb does take care of Galta, so sends Galta packing and puts Autumn right back up to 10 life now. So no longer lethal on board for MTG Nerd Girl. And that was a pretty good spot for Autumn because if you don't absorb, then you can cast Moment of Craving. You gain the two life and also get out of lethal range. So it's kind of like you got two options there. Really good spot. So Autumn has land number four, but it comes in the form of Glacial Fortress. So no double black thus far. So they're going to start off with Thought Erasure to take away the most potent threat on the other side going into the long game. The Hydroid Crisis is going to hit the board. Yeah, I mean, this is a tough spot. I think Autumn wanted the um, Surveil there. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, Autumn surveilled a Draenor Catacomb found, right to the top. found the second black source. Yeah, so things are actually starting to look pretty good now for Autumn, even though Nerd Girl is still putting on a lot of pressure. Yeah, this is actually really good for Autumn here. Autumn's going to be able to play Kai's Wrath. MTG Nerd Girl is going to deploy another lethal threat, and then Autumn ha will have Vraska's Contempt and Moment of Craving online. So here's the Kai's Wrath. 
Down to two is Autumn. Big sigh of relief from uh -huh. Autumn. But now Autumn has to kind of hang on because there are going to be a string of lethal threads. Wow. And no hide Ferox is extremely difficult to deal with here. Yeah. And you saw a little smile there from Autumn, and they're like, well, okay. Autumn Autumn needed a mana to remove the And that's going to do first. it. MTG Nerd Girl with the quick 2-0 victory. One away wow. from advancing past this group. Yeah, I mean, Autumn just needed some lands there. A, a sixth mana there would have allowed them to remove the Hexproof from the Nullhide Ferox, cast Rask's Contempt, and sort of work their way out of the weeds again. But unfortunately, it wasn't there. Yeah, and you can see that MTG Nerd Girl set this up beautifully to be really annoying for these decks, right? Sure, it is a, a deck that is vulnerable to Akaya's Wrath, and that's what we saw here was the big play from Autumn. But remember, there's negates, there's spell pierces hanging around. Now, we didn't happen to see them this game, but they are in the list for MTG Nerd Girl. And on top of that, you've got those kind of pesky cards like Nullhide Ferox to kind of clean up after the mess. And that's exactly what happened here, David. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, I really like the, the green-blue deck. It gives green a little bit of extra go. I mean, normally you would have a sideboard in these kind of decks and you could shore it up. But being best of one duo standard, you have to kind of have your main deck capable of surviving against any style deck. That's right, and it's kind of interesting to see how players have morphed their decks a little by saying, well, what is the card I really want for the sideboard in my worst matchup? And then say, can I just maybe sneak a few of those into my main deck and see how that works? And that's exactly what happened here. Uh, and while we didn't actually see those cards, uh, the game plan was strong enough. Right, I mean, instead of having all those creatures, MTG Nurko could have just had a negate yes. when Akai's Wrath came down. Negate that untap attack for the win. Game. So yeah. yeah. And that's kind of the game plan, by the way, is to get a couple of quick, big green threats on the battlefield and then protect them with your counter spells. Of course, the thing you give up when you do that, and this is something that is harder to imagine until you actually play with the deck a bunch of times, is like, you want the turn three Steel Leaf Champion and you're holding an island in your hand. <laughs> it's like, oh, right, I am yeah. giving up something for this. Yeah, I mean, the eight dual lands are great, but three islands in your Steel Leaf Champion deck can be a little rough. It can be. All right, well, we've got Becca Scott with MTG Nerd Girl right now.